Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My dear brothers and sisters, I hope you're all in good health and good iman. Today I would like to discuss with you an important topic which will make lives easier for a lot of people, inshallah. So the topic I would like to discuss is regarding making wudu with your socks on. Now, in this video, I'm going to demonstrate to you how to make wudu with your socks on. And also there will be another clip uh, which will present all the evidences that you can make wudu with your socks on. In the, in the day and age that we are currently in and with the global pandemic that is going on, it is very difficult for a lot of brothers who go to masajids to make wudu because the facilities are closed. So this way, if you have a bottle of water with you, you can make wudu anywhere. Um, so I will demonstrate to you, like I said in the video, how it's made. Uh, you know, the wiping of the socks is very, very simple. And even people who are working and it's very hard to access uh, facilities to make wudu, this will make life a lot easier for everyone. And Islam, my dear brothers and sisters, is made easy for everybody. We're the ones that make it difficult. This is a demonstration how to wipe your socks. So you follow the normal steps of the wudu, everything that you do normal, the sunnah way. And then when it comes to the feet, this is what you do. So you get the water, you get the water, it doesn't have to be that wet. You get the, feet, the socks and you just wipe it on the top here. So again here, you wipe it on the top here. So you don't need to wipe the bottom or anything like that, just the top part, so one time each. And it's simple as that, Alhamdulillah. So this should make life easier for a lot of brothers and sisters. Jawra is a sock not made out of leather, made out of things like wool, cotton, camel hair, things that are not waterproof, they're not leather. That is what a jawra is called. So can you make mas'ah on them? Can you wipe over them? A wiping is proven from the Quran, but is it something we find in the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam? For this, there is a hadith in a Tirmidhi, and here in Nail al-Awthar, Imam al-Shawkani has mentioned it as well from Mughayra ibn Shu'ba radiyallahu anhu. Here it shows that Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he made wudu and he wiped on his jawrabain wa na'lain, not jawrabain that were na'lain. Na'lain, those socks that have leather soles. So, wow shows that on both of them. So, if some Rasul some wore Jawrabain, he made mas'ah on them. And if he wore Na'lain, the ones with leather uh, soles, he made mas'ah on them. And this is a Sahih hadith. Imam al Tirmidhi has called it Hassan Sahih, as you can see here. There is Kalam on the Sanad. Some of the ulama discussed it. But I want to bring your attention here to the Aqwal of the Sahaba, as Imam Abu Dawood and others have put forward from the Sahaba radiallahu anhum that made mas'ha on jawrabain, on socks. There is Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu and as you can see on the bottom, this is a Sahih riwayah, this is an authentic riwayah. So Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu, he made mas'ha on the jawrabain. Barra ibn al-Azab, this is also a Hassan riwayah. Anas ibn Malik in a Sahih Rewaya, Abu Umama in a Hassan Rewaya, Sahal ibn Sa'ad in a Hassan Rewaya, also from other uh, Sahaba like Amr ibn Hawayrat, Umar ibn Khattab, ibn Abbas and others in weaker narrations. But even if you look at the Sahih Rewaya, you have at least seven authentic narrations that the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, they made masha on Jawrabain. Tayyib, so from the Quran itself, there is Jawaz to make masha on the Jawrabain. Right? Because you have the recitation from Khalf and, and Hamza and other uh, Imma that show from the Quran. There is also the hukam of watching the feet, which we find in other recitations. Both are correct. From the Sahih Hadith of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as reported by Imam Al-Tirmidhi, Rasulullah Sallallahu he made masha on the Jawrabain. And even if you take the Kalam on the Sanad of this Hadith, you have at least seven Sahih Hadith of the Sahaba making masha on Jawrabain. Did the Sahaba not understand the ayah? Did they not understand the sunnah? Some people they say, if you make mas'ah on regular socks, your salah is batil. Are you saying that Ibn Mas'ud and Barra bin Azim and Ansim Balik, their salah was batil? They didn't know how to make salah? Sometimes you make mas'ah on Jawrabain, people don't let you leave. They say, don't let them leave. His salah is batil. You wouldn't pray behind Ibn Mas'ud? 
These are Sahih narrations. These Sahaba understood these ahkam better than you and better than me. So we follow that which is reported authentically from the Prophet ﷺ and the Sahaba. Some people say that in the madhab of Abu Hanifa, Imam Abu Hanifa in his madhab, you're not allowed to make masha on the Jawra bank. They say this is the madhab. But it's interesting because when we go back to the books of the Hanafi madhab, like Al Hidayah, and this is the Sharh Fath al Qadir of Ibn Hammam, but if you read from Al Hidayah itself, they say Al Hidayah Sharif. It says, لا يجوز مسح على الجوربين عند أبي حنيفة. أبو حنيفة did not allow مسح on جوربين. But, and then it mentions, قال, the two said, who are the two? قادي, Abu Yusuf, and Imam Muhammad, al-Shaybani, his two major sahib, and his students, and his companions. يجوز, it is permissible if they are thick. They didn't say anything watching three miles, or being waterproof. But they said if they are thick, if they don't show, if they stick to the foot and they don't show what's underneath, Abu Yusuf and Imam Muhammad said there is jawaz to make masha on non-leather socks. In a hidayah. Tayyip. And then it says, Raja'a ila qawlihuma wa alayhi fatwa. Abu Hanifa, he made ruju. He left his qawl that you cannot make masha on the jawrabain. And he made ruju to the saying of the two, yani his companions, wa alayhi fatwa. Yani this is what the fatwa in the Hanafi madhab, the mu'tamid, the muftahbi of the Hanafi madhab is, you can make masha on thick socks. It doesn't mention anything about three miles or waterproof or anything like this. You can read it yourself, get al-hidayah, you will find it, that this is the official Hanafi madhab. So those people that tell you in the Hanafi madhab, you don't make masha on a bain, they are not teaching you the madhab of Abu Hanifa. They are teaching you whatever they want to teach. And this narration, you will find it in a Tirmidhi. Abu Hanifa's narration, you will find it in Tirmidhi itself. You will find Imam a Tirmidhi when he mentioned the hadith of Mughira ibn Shu'ba, and then he said, This hadith is Hassan Sahih. Then he says, Bukala Abu Isa, Samir to Salih ibn Muhammad a Tirmidhi. Call Samir to Abu Muqatil a Samarqandi. Yakul Dakhal to Allah Abi Hanifa, Fi Mardihi, Allah di Matafihi, Fadaa bi Ma'in, Fatawadda, Walehi Jawraban. فمصح عليهما ثم قال فعلت اليوم شيئا لم أكن فعله يعني قبل ذلك فمصحت على الجوربين وهما غير معلنين طيب here you go. look at this narration in جامع الترمذي جامع الترمذي get it yourself and look at it Imam al-Tirmidhi narrates that he with the sanad the narration of all the way back to the man who said I entered upon Imam Abu Hanifa it, when he was sick in his last days, yani this was his final fatwa, in his last days, upon the sickness upon which he died. And he called for water and he made masha on jawrabain, on socks that were not leather. And they were not na'alain, they were not bound with leather soles. And he said, I'm doing today what I didn't use to do before. He changed his opinion and he, this was his final opinion that you can make masha on jawrabain. Now, some of the people say they have to be waterproof. Where did you get that? Subhanallah, Jawrabain, look it up in a dictionary, Arabic dictionary. It, by definition, are, they are made out of things like wool, camel hair, cotton, things that are not waterproof. So by definition, Jawrabain are not waterproof. Where did you get the sharp they have to be waterproof? Some people say get seal skin, like the stuff that, you know, the diving suits are made out of. Do you think Sahaba had them? You think Sahaba had diving suits they were cutting out to make socks? Where would, where would they get such a material? Jawrabain are not waterproof. Some people say you have to walk three miles. Where did you get three miles? Where did you, three miles where? In, in a hot, a rocky desert, in a mountainous place, in a, in a green valley? Is this in a hadith? Is this a, in a saying of a Sahabi? None of this. What is proven? The asal is to wash, but to wipe is also proven from the Quran. So you cannot say, oh, you need mutawadar hadith because it's in the Qur'an. It is in the Qur'an. When do you wipe? From sahih hadith. If you have khuf, leather socks, you can wipe. No problem with that. And there's no contradiction. Then if you have jawrabain that are not leather, as long as they're thick, they protect the foot, they stay on the foot, they don't expose it. And they don't expose the foot. Yani if it's cut off where the top of the foot is exposed and what's supposed to be washed is not covered, you cannot make mas'ah on them. They have to cover what? regularly would be washed. Tayyib, 
So that means they're free of holes. They don't have to be waterproof. You don't have to walk in them a certain amount. You just, they just need to be able to stick to your foot. You put them on in a state of tahara. Yani you wash your feet, then you put them on. You invalidate your wudu. You make mas'ah on them. Not a problem. For the muqeem, one day and one night. For the musabir, three days and three nights. This is proven from the Qur'an itself. From the sahih hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa From the sahih ahadith from many of the sahaba radiyallahu anhum. And from Abu Hanifa rahmatullah alayhi and his own practice, and Imam Ahmad and other imma from the Salaf of Salihin. Jazakumullah wa khairan wa akhirat dawana. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Thank you for tuning. Assalamu alaikum.